prior to beginning this project, I had known Archbishop Timothy Dolan fairly well. Uh, I was in Rome at the time that he was rector of the North American College, which is the kind of elite American seminary in Rome. Some people talk about it as the West Point of the American church. Uh, and Dolan always had an open door policy there. So I spent many evenings with him there, lunches and so on. Uh, and I had, of course, tracked his career since he returned to the United States. Uh, and had interacted with him a great deal. So he was not a mystery to me. And in fact, you know, part of the attraction to this project in the first place uh, is that I felt Timothy Dolan allowed me to tell the, the story of the Catholic Church that in some ways my normal daily work as a reporter never allowed me to tell. Because here's the thing. You know, when you're a reporter, most of what you focus on in writing or talking about the Catholic Church is crisis. You know, it's the sex abuse crisis. It's debates over the church and abortion, the church and health care reform. It's whatever the latest, you know, papal PR meltdown is. Uh, and those are all compelling, important storylines. But that's 95% of my professional work. Now, as a Catholic, I know that there's a much bigger other story to tell about the Catholic Church, which is how it feels to be Catholic in the inside. I mean, frankly, to me, the story of being Catholic isn't sturm and drong. It isn't heartache. For the most part, it's that it's a hell of a lot of fun. I mean, you know, the Catholic Church is populated with fascinating, weird characters that you would never meet in any other walk of life. You know, it's populated with people who love to sit down over a couple bottles of wine, sometimes more than a couple, uh, over, you know, scotch and sodas and so forth, and tell stories. Uh, and, and so on. I mean, it's about parishes where, where you meet everybody under the sun, you know, from toddlers to the octogenarians, you know, who enjoy one another's company and all have something to bring to the table. That's, the, that's how Catholic life feels from the inside. It's just unfortunately relatively little of my professional work ever allows that to come out. Telling the story of Tim Dolan lets it come out because Tim Dolan is a guy who lives and breathes that, that inner reality of kind of happy Catholic life. All right? uh, I knew that going in, and certainly the project confirmed it. Uh, I think perhaps what, what, um, what the project uh, doing this book with Archbishop Dolan added to the mix uh, is uh, that it confirmed for me what an astonishing work ethic Dolan actually has. I mean, I already knew uh, that uh, kind of what his vision of the church was. I already knew that he was a hail fellow well met who never saw a back he didn't want to slap or a baby he didn't want to kiss. I knew all of that. Uh, what, what I guess I didn't understand is just what his average day is like. Um, and, and as part of the project, I followed him around for several weeks in different periods of the year in New York. Uh, and, uh, and, and to tell you the truth, I mean, I was exhausted halfway through day one. Uh, I mean, this is a guy, you know, who will get up at the crack of dawn, he will spend an hour in prayer, then he will spend two or three hours at his desk trying to sort through the mountains of correspondence uh, that wait for him every day. Uh, you know, halfway through, he'll have to interrupt to take a call from the Vatican ambassador in the United States or from the governor of New York who's got some thorny political problem he's got to deal with. You know, he's got a priest in crisis. You know, he'll interrupt all of that to go over and celebrate daily mass at St. Patrick's Cathedral, which his predecessor did not do, but it's important to Dolan because that's his pastoral contact with the people. Uh, you know, he'll then get into his SUV and drive, you know, two hours through mind-numbingly excruciating New York traffic, you know, to show up at a parish to, to do a confirmation or to meet with the priests and, and to say a few words, all the while working the phones. Then he'll do it in reverse to get back. Uh, then he'll spend a couple of hours doing some, you know, uh, theological reading or some political reading that's important to him for whatever reason. That's every day of his life. And, and on every one of those days, he can start with a game plan, but some crisis might erupt that completely forces him to, to tear the day up. And just to be able to get out of bed and do that day after day after day without grousing about it, but with a genuine joy for life uh, that he exudes, I mean, to me, honestly, you know, it's, it's nothing short of miraculous. I, I think the other thing that, that just sort of came home for me uh, is, you know, I already knew that Archbishop Dolan plays well with the Catholic crowd. I, I think what came home for me through this project was how well he plays even with people who either know nothing about the Catholic Church or, quite frankly, have a chip on their shoulder about the Catholic Church. Remember, uh, one of the things I did with him is uh, I went with him to a synagogue in New York where he was going to be lighting the first candle of Hanukkah. Uh, and uh, prior to this event, it, he was talking with the, with the rabbi. I was off to the side standing with a, a senior member of the congregation there. Uh, and, and the guy, Jewish obviously, and he asked me what I, was, what I did for a living. 
And I said, well, I'm a reporter who writes about the Vatican. Well, that was sort of the magic word, which allowed all kinds of frustrations this guy has with the Vatican to erupt. So he was complaining about, you know, Pius XII and his record during the Second World War and, you know, the controversy over a Carmelite convent at Auschwitz and, you know, all kinds of axes he had to grind with the Catholic Church. So having got that out of his system, he then said, but what are you doing here? Uh, and I said, well, I'm writing a book about Archbishop Timothy Dolan. This guy's face just lit up, and he said, Dolan? magnificent human being. He said, if every Catholic bishop were like him, even I would consider converting. Okay, in miniature, you know, I think that is the Timothy Dolan experience. <laughs>